Um, I take around 200 to Cloverleaf Camp each summer and have to take between 130 and 150 each year um, to, to 4-H Cloverleaf Camp. I don't know that we have a magic answer as to why we take that many. When they asked us to teach this class, I said, Abby, what do they want us to do? I mean, I feel like everybody promotes camp probably in a similar way. Um, but what we're going to offer for you today is some, some things we felt like were key in, um, you know, providing us with the opportunity to take 200 kids to camp. I don't know if you want to have that opportunity, um, <laughs> but, but we're going to tell you some, some keys that we feel like help us um, offer to as many kids as we can and have them take us up on that offer to go to camp. Um, so to begin with, we're going to transform into a club meeting mode just for the beginning here. And you guys have some items. I'm going to let Abby help start you off with this. All right. Today, guys, we're going to be talking about 4-H summer camp. How many of you are excited about camp? Yeah, so am I. So today, you have some items that you chose out of my 4-H bag. It's going to tell us a little bit more about 4-H summer camp, some things you're going to get to do, some things you're going to learn while we're there. And, and the camp we're going to this year is Rock Eagle. Okay. okay. We're, uh, we're focusing on Rock Eagle. Okay. <laughs> So who has a rock? We'll start there. Okay, what do you guys think that the rock's going to have to do with Rock Eagle 4-H summer camp? Um, the eagle is made out of rock. The <laughs> porch rock. Very good. The rock eagle is a rock from the lake. You can throw it at your friend. Oh, yeah. We can't give rocks away. We're not going to throw it at the friends. But the rock eagle is an effigy mound that was built over 2,000 years ago by Native Americans. While you are at camp at Rock Eagle, you're going to get to learn all about that information. You're also going to get the chance to visit the mound while you're there to see how cool it is. And it's really neat. All right. Who has a piece of paper with some pictures on it? What do you think that has to do with Rock Eagle? Hold over where everybody can see your pictures. They're so pretty. Mm -hmm. What do you think that has to do with Rock Eagle? Well, I have a bigger sister, so I, I think this is tribe. Very good. Mm -hmm. You had a sister who went. So probably your sister was part of one of three tribes while at Rock Eagle. And these tribes get to compete for the tribal shield. Um, you're going to be working with all your tribe. You're going to be cleaning up your area. You're going to be participating in fun classes and wet games and all kinds of fun things um, to earn points for the tribal shield. There are the Shawnee, the Muskogee, and the Cherokee. Now, who has our feather? Okay, feathers. What are we going to do with feathers at camp? Uh, fly. Fly? <laughs> well, I wish we could. <laughs> the feathers are representing our Mikos for the week. Each tribe has a set of Mikos, and we also have the tribal council that's kind of in charge of our camp, our week at camp. And these are the guys who are going to help get us excited about all the activities and the competitions that we're going to be doing. And they're just going to be motivating us throughout the week and leading us through our classes and through all of our activities. All right, who has some shoestring? What do you think you need those for for camp? To wear shoes that have to be tied. <laughs> you, do, you do have to wear very comfortable shoes that can be tied, that you can walk on trails and all the fun things you're going to get to do. But those strings also represent um, the classes that you'll be taking part in. We have red strings and white strings and blue strings. The red and white strings are fifth graders, and there's all kind of fun classes you'll get to take. And then our sixth graders take part in the blue string adventure program, where you get to do the high ropes and the climbing ball and the zip line. And I do go ahead and tell fifth graders about that because we go to Rock Eagle two years in a row, so I want them to know that you know they get to do that if they come back the next year. Um, Moving right along to the meal card. It has a, a card, but it's almost like a credit card. All right. This is your meal card that you're going to use while you're at camp at Rock Eagle. Everyone will have their own meal card. It will have your name on it. And you're going to be responsible for keeping up for that all week long. And this is going to admit you into the food line at our brand new dining hall that we've got. And the food's pretty good there while we're at Camp Rock Eagle as well. We'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right. Who has goggles? All right. What do you think goggles have to do with 4-H camp? You do get to go swim them while you're at camp. Rock Eagle has two fabulous pools. We have the brand new pool where it has buckets that will drop water on your head and it has an entrance, entrance just like a beach. You get to walk in just like you're walking into the water at the beach. Pool 2 has the big water slide. You're going to get to see it in the video in just a moment. Um, we have two great pools that you can take part in at free time. And the icy cup. Who has that? Okay, mm -hmm. tell me about the icy cup. What do you think? Drink. Yeah. Yes, you guys are going to get the opportunity during your free time 
to visit our canteen. And there are ices available, there's popcorn, there's snacks and drinks and all kinds of fun things like that. There's also some souvenirs that you can get as well. You will need to bring some extra spending money for any items that you purchase at the canteen during your free time. All right. So everything we went a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. That kind of wraps up the camp symbol game. You can use this in several different ways. We use it sometimes to promote during our February camp promotion month. One thing that we're going to talk about in a few minutes is promoting camp in your very first club meeting starting in September. And you can use this camp symbol game throughout the year. Each month, taking a different symbol and talk about how it relates to Rock Eagle or whichever camp you're going to. Or one thing that I'm going to be doing this year in my newsletters is to include a camp corner that will have a little piece of information, a little tidbit each month to get them excited before we do our big camp promotion in February. Um, so now we're going to take those symbols that you just saw and we're going to watch the camp video. You get to see those symbols in action is what I might say. We're not really going to make you watch the camp video. Um, but I hope all of you do you use the camp video. It's great. Um, it has, um, I, I said in the last class, was, um, the new camp video, because I did use the old one um, back when that was around, and it was pretty fun. Kids loved it. Um, but I think we've all gotten used to this one and know that it's probably a better option to use in club meetings and in school because it does throw in, you know, a little bit of education along with all the fun. Um, so it's a little bit better received in our classroom. Um, I usually do not hand out this camp application until after the video. I don't want any ears turned off by the cost um, because we do want to talk to them about the cost. It's important, but you know we're going to talk to you about ways that that we do this. But I try not to exclude any child from camp. We try to we try to tell them not to let the money stop you from going to camp. And when they see that, a lot of times their ears turn off. So I don't give that out until after the video. All right, the brochure that you passed out, the actual camp brochure. Um, this is what we give out to our camp, to all of our 5th and 6th graders when we're promoting camp. This is the Bullock County version. Effingham County is very similar to Leanne and I created this years ago when we worked together in Effingham County, and so we've kept the same format. We like to put as much information on the front as we can with the camp cost, the camp date, and also the sign-up date. One thing that we're going to talk about in a few moments is how we make our camp sign-ups a one-day only, kind of like a hot commodity type thing. We'll give you some additional information on that in just a few minutes. On the inside of your camp brochure, you'll see that we have like an agenda of what your day is going to look like. And I stress to the kids that this is just an example of what one day could look like because they get real caught up on, is this what we're doing every single day? And I tell them that you know, your days can be different, your classes will be different, you'll have your free time in there at different times as well. And then we also have that application, which is on that back page. And that is what they will bring to our camp sign-up. They'll have that information filled out, and they'll cut it off and bring it in to actually sign up for camp. The insert? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. The parent insert that's in there as well. When you take anywhere from 150 to 200 kids, mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of volunteers. You have to have these parents. If you wait till your camp sign-up, and then start worrying about volunteers, you're kind of behind the game. So we start promoting for our camp volunteers when we promote camp to the kids. We both say, we need some cool, fun parents that can hang with us for a whole week of 4-H camp. This gets the kids excited. You know, some of the kids are going to be like, oh, that's my mom or that's my dad. Others are going to be shaking their heads saying, there's no way my parents are going. But they usually know who to send this, and the parents that we want usually end up coming. Through having this application in the camp or the yeah the camp brochure, we have them turn it in at camp sign up. So we already have a list going, and generally we both get enough parent applications that we end up turning people down and having you know putting them on like a waiting list for other opportunities. So that's a really good problem to have when we are getting ready to take that many kids to 4-H camp. This is just kind of the jumping off point. We use these parent applications to get information we may even call a reference or two, but we still go through and have them fill out the official UGA volunteer application and send in for the background check like we are supposed to be doing. So, I, you know, this has worked really well for us, the, the parent insert. The application works well. I, some years I changed the front up just because I'm tired of looking at it, but, you know, basically we keep it the same. It's worked well for us. Um, we're going to go through, this, this. these are kind of our key points. These are the kind of things that we felt like, I know some of you are doing these things, but that we felt like, you know, helped us with our numbers. So, um, promoting camp from the very first meeting, um, some of you may recognize this. This is from the Get Your Game On curriculum. I'll give a little plug for that since I helped with that curriculum. Um, 
He built this into the intro lesson. So as you use that PowerPoint, you know, you're going to come to a slide that talks about PAM. You can insert your own pictures of your own county here. Um, and then on the next slide, you have um, a map of, of Georgia. And you can, um, as each icon comes up, you can talk just a little bit about each camp. Um, so this is in that get your game on curriculum if you need a way to build this into your first meeting. If you're like me, I'm talking about so much at that first meeting. I need I need a guide to help me. And this, this PowerPoint kind of had throws that in there in a quick way, but you're still talking about camp from the first meeting. And Abby has some great ideas for this too. Mm -hmm. And I already mentioned about the camp simple games. You can do that throughout the year. And then that camp corner in your newsletter, I really think that that's going to be a good way to get the kids excited and just let them know about camp. Don't wait until February and say, oh yeah, we're going to camp this summer. Because a lot of times kids will start talking to their parents about it. And so parents can along and along be thinking about it. And I generally, at the beginning of the year, I don't ever give them a hard number as far as a price. But I usually will say, camp's going to be around this amount of money. So in their head, they can go ahead and start thinking about that number. And they can also possibly start saving. I know around Christmas time, we tell them, you know, get money for Christmas, mm -hmm. you can put it up to the side for a camp deposit. So those are some things that we do to promote along the way. Using the camp video we talked about, making camp a hot commodity, I really think this has worked for both of our counties. We do a one-day only sign-up. Um, and in my county, people know, you know, if you don't come to that camp sign-up, you're going to miss your chance to go to camp. When I get there at 7 o'clock in the morning, we usually have 100 people already in line. We have people that get there at 4 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I've even had people camp out. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, I, it is, every year I'm amazed. And, and I try not to say, I don't give them the idea that they have to do that, but I do throw it in the meeting. I'm like, you know, some people get there at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm not saying you have to do that. But if you get there at 9 or 10 o'clock, we very well may not have a spot for you. So get there early. So, you know, I think in us saying that each year, we have we have made camp a hot commodity in our county. I mean, that they know. If they want to go to camp, they better be there that day. Um, and do you really not let anybody else find up um, I If we have spots available, I very rarely do. Very rarely. But I, if I have spots available, of course I'm going to keep signing them up. Um, but it's just that idea of it. I mean, it's the idea of it. And, and it may take you a couple of years to really sell that one day only sign up. We do an early sign up for project achievement because I needed to up my project achievement numbers. Yeah. So I tied it to camp because we were so successful with camp. So we've helped our project achievement numbers go up because now whether it's for the right reason or not, that the parents are signing them up to do DPA because they don't want to stand in the crazy line they've heard about to get them signed up for camp. So, you know, it all, it's, it's helped our program out a lot doing the one-day sign-up all the way around to Project Achievement too. Mm -hmm. That brings us in scholarship to the next item that we will talk about. On um, the brochure that you have, Leanna charges $2.90 for camp. In Effingham County, we have to charge a little bit more because we use charter buses to travel to and from camp. So we charge around $350. And a lot of kids, that's going to turn off. Um, but because of this, we like to offer scholarships, opportunities. We also like to offer fundraisers. In our county, this past year was the first year that we actually offered a scholar, or fundraiser opportunity for the kids to participate in, and we sold flower bulbs. And we had some kids who raised enough money to pay their entire way to camp, and I refunded their deposit that they put in there. Plus, there were a few kids that I actually put up some money in an envelope for spending money at camp. So it was a really great opportunity for them to be able to raise their money. I think we raised over three thousand dollars of flower bulbs to go towards camp costs. And Leanna has some more statistics than she does. Yeah, we did, I, and I actually was interested to see because I don't ever pull the statistics, you know, just for my knowledge, and I should. But we do, we do three different options for them. We found giving them options helps. Um, and at camp sign-up morning, they'll pass by the table, the, the fundraising table, and I usually will have a team leader sitting there to talk to them about this option. They usually raise 50, it goes, it's just for camp, and it's just for that child. We don't put it in a pot or anything. It's whatever they raise, is whatever they get toward camp. And ours, we, we just kind of strive to find fundraisers, they, they get 50% profit. So chocolates is one that we do, World's Finest, and we do the free order. We don't do those little bars. I'll send those out the door. Um, magazine, we do that through the source book, has an option on that. And they've, we've, it's been fine. We don't have to touch those really. So we like that. Minimal work on our part to do magazines. 
So we keep doing them, even though they're not a big seller. Um, and then Vidalia Onions is our big seller. So we do a local farmer. Um, we work with him, and he does a 50% profit. He does $10 boxes, for, um, and we pay him $5 for those boxes. So um, last year we raised $3,270 just in onion sales, um, $1,895 in chocolate, and then $294 in magazines. So around $5,400 um, and 60 kids participated. So you can see, I mean, obviously it's a need. We got a great number participating. And I just feel like, you know, those 60 kids might not have been on my campus if we didn't offer them. There are kids that are not going to be able to do a fundraiser. Their parents just aren't not going to help them do that. And those are your kids who may qualify for a scholarship. Um, in the past, we worked with our Georgia Bankers Association um, and banks that were a member of that were glad to donate. Now, in these times, I've had some banks that have had to pull that out. So I've made up for it with other businesses and individuals who donate. They don't have to sponsor a whole scholarship. Any amount, you know, we'll put towards it. We usually take between 15 and um, 20 kids on scholarship. We usually raise between two and three thousand um, dollars through that fund, and they might have a partial scholarship or a full scholarship. It just depends on their level of need. That need is identified by teachers, principals, counselors. I give them a letter. I attach a um, scholarship application to that, which I'd be happy to share if you may need that. Um, and those teachers, they know if that child, A, I want to see that they're excited about PAM, they don't have a lot of behavior problems in the classroom, and that they do have a genuine need for this money, and they probably couldn't fundraise otherwise. So scholarships have been, um, I don't know, it makes me feel good because I feel like we're reaching those kids that, that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to go to camp. We also have them write a letter during their week of camp for that donor, and we and we, we send that back with a picture of not the child, but you know pictures from camp, so the donor sees what they're donating to, and and, and they've been almost everybody donates again the next year, and we build it each year on that. So I just think fundraising and scholarships. If you're not doing that, you're missing some kids. You know, you're miss, you're leaving home. Some kids that probably could benefit greatly from me. Leanna, did you bring copies of that letter? I don't have that, but I just, um, y'all send me an email and I'll send you that. I can just attach it right back to you. Um, some of this that we're going to show you is available on the 4-H website, but it's not that. So I'll, I'll share that with you. But, and I may be asking something I shouldn't. Like one thing I, I ask them their average household income. I don't know if I'm legally with UGA on there, should ask that, but I do. Nobody told me not to. Um, so I look at that, I mean, but really I'm looking at the, what the teacher and, because I have to have to recommend, I have to send a recommendation letter too. So you send the teachers and listen, they, they, I give the teacher that letter. Let them choose. I, let the te I give the teacher a letter explaining we have funds available for these kids and we were, look we're looking for kids who are excited about the opportunity to go to camp but cannot afford it. And then I just rely on the teacher to tell me about their situation a little bit. So I, I, I couldn't do that on my own because I don't know their situation. So I, I rely on those teachers, principals, and counselors. Okay. Um, what uh, the next item is giving kids some input. Once you get these kids signed up to go to camp, we like to give them input on what they're actually going to be doing as far as their class choices and then also their tablet choices. On the application that you have in your brochure, there's a spot for them to list a friend that they want to be in the cabin with. Now the problem with that is they get these applications before sign up. They can list their best friend, but their best friend ends up not going to camp. So we always let them know that if they list someone that ends up not going to camp, they can always call the 4-H office by a certain deadline to change. Outside of that, we always group kids in their cabins with their kids from their school. So usually they want to stay with their kids, or they want to stay with their friends from their same school, and so that usually works out pretty well, but if they specifically noted someone, we will put them in the cabin with them. And then the same thing for the class choices, we have a list, and they can do a check-off list. We don't want kids going to the same class that they hate. So we like to give them a little bit of control over their week of camp, and it just usually makes for a much better week. We kind of keep some headaches from happening. Yeah. And we do the class sheets um, when at camp sign up. They pick up a medical form, a class sheet, and a what to bring list. So those are some things I feel like as soon as they sign up for camp, they want to go ahead and know what about. Um, so giving some, giving kids input really helps. Um, also, we do we both do camp parent orientation meetings. This saves um, a lot of phone calls and a lot of time on on our end. 
um, answering individual questions. We try to address all of them at the camp parent meeting. Um, we also, as a lure to that camp parent meeting, we offer them the chance to see who they're going to be in the cabin with and who they're going to be on the bus with. Um, and we get a great, great number that turn out for that. Um, so we provide them lots of information at the camp parent meeting. I would, I would highly recommend doing one. And we show the camp video because yeah, parents don't get to see that. And, you know, we make it a fun thing for them, too. Um, but it also helps us out. And also with the cabin choices, one reason we do that is if there is, if there are any issues with somebody being in the cabin with some another child, they can have a parent or, or a parent can request for their specific child to be moved out of the situation. We don't move other kids to accommodate for this one child, but if the parent has an issue with their child being in, in that cabin, we can move them out. But it has to be a valid request. But that way, we kind of take care of all of those loose ends prior to getting to camp. So that when we're here, when we get to camp, things like that should be ironed out. Um, Good question. Do you got behavior like kids that are very, you know, they're just very bad in school? Do y'all kind of, I don't know how to ask the question. Do y'all ask teachers? I mean, because like I said, I've had a couple that went to camp with us and they were. Well, <laughs> I guess I hate to exclude them because sometimes when you get them in a camp setting versus a classroom setting, you get a different child. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to exclude somebody just because they have, you know, not done well in the classroom. But I do say, you know, 4-H camp is a privilege. Um, you know, you don't have to go to 4-H camp. If you, don't, if, you could, if you can't behave at school, you might not want to go to camp because your parents are going to pay a lot of money and I don't have a problem sending you home. And I've sent them home before. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'll stress that. At the, well, I think we both stress that at the parent meeting as well. That yeah, that's where we really talk about that. If there's an issue, you will be coming into Rock Eagle. We've got directions ready for you. You know, so that way the parents are prepared, and they will most of the time let their kids.